Hello Robotics Enthusiasts, welcome to the video series, As Told by the Big Bot Theory. In the spirit of cooperation, FTC Team A398, TVBT, will be sharing our code publicly through GitHub and giving tutorials through videos like the one you're watching right now. In today's episode, we'll be exploring the science of PID gyro control, as told by the Big Bot Theory. Enjoy. So let's start by taking a look at the code. As you can see, we have created a my block for the whole gyro PID. We're using the EV3 gyro sensor that comes with the student edition. So let's delve a bit deeper into the gyro program. The block provides three inputs for KP, KI, and KD, and then two more inputs for TP, which stands for target power, and time in seconds. As you can see, these are the default values, which our team has found to be extremely accurate for PID. So let's take a look at the full code. I'm going to scroll in the code. And it's all in a big while loop with the amount of time you put in per second. Our code implements a full proportional integral derivative calculation, not just proportional or just integral or just derivative. However, if you want to turn off the integral and derivative, just change their values to zero in the my block. Remember, our my block is available on GitHub along with all of our other code, and the link for that will be provided in the description. Our code also includes a special gyro full reset. We found that using the simple gyro reset doesn't fix the problem. The gyro often drifts if you don't do this full reset. In the full reset, we not only reset it, but we change from angle to rate to back to angle and then reset it twice more. We found this to be optimal. As you can see, I've now changed the value of A, or KP, the constant for proportional, to 1, and the other constants to 0. This will effectively make the program not a full PID, but just proportional control. We will see why teams sometimes perform this as we look at the robot in action. But for now, let's look at the code. In EV3G, the code may be a little hard to understand. So, I've created a version in Robot C that we can use to understand the code. So as you can see, we're setting the different constants, and we're also creating variables called integral, last error, and derivative, as well as true power, turn, zero, and the gyro sensor value. In the loop, the gyro sensor is equal to the sensor value of the gyro sensor, and the error is that same amount. Because of the reset we do at the beginning, the straight line becomes zero, and anything other than that can be perceived as error. We then do integral calculation. Integral is basically a log of all the past errors and helps the program improve itself for the future. The reason there is a two-thirds constant here is because integral remembers all past errors. So if at some time there was, for a random reason, a very large error, the program will try to correct itself for that in the future. But this effect can be too large, so we tone it down a bit by making the memory weaker through this two-thirds constant. We also calculate the derivative. The derivative tries to predict what future error will be. And it does this by taking the current error and subtracting the last error to get a sense of what future error will be. Usually, integral and derivative both require a delta time variable in it. However, 
since time is the same in all of our code, it's always looping at the same time, we can just factor out this variable complete. Finally, we set motor B and C to our target power minus this turn and target power plus the turn. And we set the last error to the new error. As you can see, these are our defaults, which we found through testing. And for just P, we recommend setting KP to 1 and the others to 0. Now let's take a look at the robot in action. I've already downloaded the full PID control, and now we're going to run it. Our gyroscope is placed on the left, and you'll hear more about why later. But for now, let's run this program. As you can see, the robot is accurately following the initial line. And if I add air, it fixes itself up and continues following straight on the line. That was with full PID. But now let's take a look at what happens if we do just proportional. In PID, you may have noticed that the robot tends to overshoot and then recalculate. If you use just P, the robot does not overshoot when error is introduced. This is why many teams often prefer to just use P. Finally, let's look at a tip about robot gyro placement. As you can see in our robot, we place the gyro on the side. You could also place the gyro on top of the robot, or behind it, or on the other side, or in front of it. There are many options here, and it's really about experimentation, so we encourage you to do the experiment yourself. However, in our research, we found that placing the gyro in the center, high above the robot, or on the side, helps quite a bit. Thank you for watching The Science of PID Gyro Control, as told by the Big Bob Theory. We hope you enjoyed the video and learn some helpful tips for your robotics challenge. Please check out our channel and like this video. The link for our GitHub account is in the description below. Thank you.